We're going to find the following. We want to graph this one, x squared minus 6x plus 5. Here's the information they're asking us to find, and then we'll take that information, plot it, we'll be able to get our graph. Okay, so the first thing is we want to find our vertex. Okay, so the, for the vertex, we want to use x is equal to negative b over 2a, since it's written out in this form. It's not written in the vertex form, so we want to use negative b over 2a here. Uh, that's going to be, you have negative and negative 6 over 2 times a. In this case, there's a 1 in front of there. And when you simplify that, you're going to get x is equal to 3. So 3 is the x-coordinate for your vertex. You want to find the y-coordinate. And that's where you put 3 back into this equation here in place of x. So I have 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 5. And I get 9 minus 18 is negative 9 plus 5 is negative 4. So now I know the coordinates of my vertex. It's going to be 3 and negative 4. What you also know right away is you also know your axis of symmetry. Your axis of symmetry always begins with x equals, and you're just going to indicate the x coordinate of your vertex, which is going to be 3. So axis of symmetry is x equals 3. Now we want to find the intercepts. Okay, so I'll do, I'll do the y intercept first down here. Y intercept is where you put in a 0 for x. So if I do that, I get 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 5, and I get y is equal to 5. So now I have another point on my graph. The last thing I want to find are the x-intercepts. So for x-intercept, you want to do the same thing every time you're putting in a 0 for x. So I have 0 equals x squared minus 6x plus 5. Now this is one that you can do a whole bunch of different methods to solve. You can factor quadratic formula, all different methods. If you, if, uh, you want to always look for if you can factor first because usually that's going to be the easiest and, and least amount of work. So this one we are able to factor. You look for what numbers multiply to make positive 5 but then add to be negative 6. So the answer to that, you're going to have 1 and 5. And both of those you want to have negative because negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5. If you add them together, that's where you get the negative 6 from. Each of these individually, you're going to set equal to 0. If you do, you're going to get x is 1, and you're also going to get 5 by setting both those equal. That's what will make this equation true, would be 1 and 5. So now I know that 1 and 5 are my x-intercepts. I found all the information, and I'm going to use this information now to graph. So the first thing is I'm going to graph our plot 3, negative 4. So over 3 and down 4 would be right there. Next, I have x-intercept 1 and 5, 1 here and a 5 there. And then also my y-intercept is going to be 5 as well. So again, we notice that all the points will make a curve. So you're going to notice that if you did it correct, all of them should line up. What you're also going to notice too is let's go ahead and look at that uh, the axis of symmetry line. That's our fold line. And what we notice about that is that you see that this x-intercept is exactly two away from that dotted line, and this one is also exactly two, a distance of two away from the dotted line. So you're always going to notice that you have the equal, uh, equal distance away on both sides of that dotted line. You would have that true over here as well. So you could, you could have another point above here that would be the same distance from here to here and from here to here. But those four, that would be enough to, to draw the graph. So I'll go ahead and fill that in. And this would be your completed graph. So for this one we just draft, suppose it asks us to find the domain and range along with that one as well. Okay, so domain is talking about the x values the graph is using. Now if we look at the original equation, there's no division by zero, there's no square roots. So that means that there's no restrictions that we could put in there for x. We can see that by the graph as well. These are going to, this will keep going that way and this will go this way. So because of that, all of our x values are being used. Negative infinity to positive infinity would be the domain. Okay, let's do the range next. So for range, the lowest number here is going to be negative 4. The highest number it will go up to is going to be infinity. So in this case, the lowest number is negative 4, highest is infinity. You always put the lowest number first, then the highest number. So the range would be these y values only starting from negative 4.